Britain. 33 million vehicles, 250,000 miles of tarmac. Lights and sirens are no longer enough. The biker cops and paramedics are taking to two wheels to beat the most congested roads in Europe. They're a surefire way of getting vital help where it's most needed, fast. Yeah, just advise we got fire and ambulance on scene. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service race to protect the public and save lives. Coming up on Emergency Bikers. Paramedic Mark Hayes is called to a man hit by a bus. Essex biker cop Martin Ackers clamps down on illegal road users. Right, what's going to happen to this car is I'm seizing it. And we meet the biker paramedics looking after the people of Oxford. Big breath, stop. It's a sleepy Sunday morning in Birmingham. Mark and Steve are in a coffee shop waiting for a call, passing the time doing a crossword. Don't miss your game. Mm. I've done all the easy ones. Well, I can see that. The older you get, you're supposed to be wiser. Right. So you must be really, really wise. 22 across. Oh, no. You're going for three letters. You always go for well, the easy ones. No, hang on. If it was an easy one, you would have already put it in. Mediocre. 11 down. Really? See, that's a bit work, isn't it? Aren't you supposed to do one there? Oh, yeah. You always get stuck on the medical ones. <laughs> But it's not long before the radio comes to life. 212, Roger, received. Thank you. A man's collapsed at a Sunday market in the city centre. Steve Harris is responding. On his Yamaha FJR 1300, Steve can weave through the traffic to get to incidents faster than an ambulance. But not today. The Sunday morning drivers seem to be still asleep, making Steve's job much harder. Steve has no further information about the incident. There may be life-threatening injuries. He has to get there as fast as possible. The motorbike allows him to respond quickly, but he's just as vulnerable as any other biker. Even with the hold-ups, Steve makes it to the scene of the incident in just over four minutes. A visitor to the Sunday market suddenly dropped to the floor and began convulsing. Market police have done what they can and there's a doctor on scene. I found out he's got heart problems. Okay. Um, he was fitting. Um, he's a diabetic. I can't tell you if he's type 2 or type 1. I don't know. Okay. But, Epilepsy? Um, I, I don't know. All I know is he's had a fit. He's had a fit. That's how I found him. This, this gentleman is a, a, a doctor, apparently. He's a... Hello there. Uh, how are you? How's it going? Good, yeah. He's uh, not able to give any information, really. He looks yeah. very confused. Just... Yeah, he is. In severe cases, doing. low blood sugar could cause convulsions. If left untreated, it will eventually lead to loss of consciousness, coma, and possibly even death. Normal blood sugar levels are 5.5. The man's reading is 2.3. It's low, but not that low. It may not account for the convulsions. Sir, we need to give you this. Open your mouth. But without any more information, the best Steve can do is treat the low blood sugar by feeding the man some concentrated glucose gel. Swallow, swallow, swallow. The seizure has left the man confused and disorientated. He's not swallowing, and Steve's having problems communicating. Can you speak the language, man? Just tell this man to swallow that. Just tell him to swallow what he's just said. He's a cow. Cow, na iski. Swallow. Dirne ne be cow iski. Under karo. Eat that. अंदर करो इसकी जो कुछ जड़ने ने पे खाओ इसकी अंदर करो Steve's next option is to inject the man with glucagon 
a hormone that has the opposite effect of insulin, forcing the liver to release stores of glucose into the bloodstream. The injection works quickly and brings the man round, just enough to start swallowing the glucose gel. Eat it, eat. That's it. There you go. That's better. You want to move on, mate? It's nice to see you. Okay. The combined effect of the glucose and the hormone injection is immediate. Ask him if he's feeling better. Good, better, Mr. Oscar. Now, better, you're in the third Oh yeah, he's speaking all right. But the cause of the convulsions is still a mystery to Steve. Did you witness the convulsion? I didn't know. I just saw him yeah, lying on the he floor. Was, he was full No, no. Well, he was going, yeah, and he was yeah. breathing. was all erratic and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and was, was, it, was he just twitching or was he thrashing? He wasn't thrashing. He was okay. just twitching more than anything. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. An ambulance has arrived to get the man to hospital. Cheers. Uh, thank you. Gentleman uh, seen to drop on the floor, uh, query convulsion, but he, he was shaking. Hello there, do you speak English? Yeah. You do? Okay. Are you diabetic? Do you have injection or tablet? No English. No English. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to stand you up, put you in the ambulance, so that it's all warmer and private, and then we'll have a chat. Okay? Let's get you up. Come on. Are you yeah. epilepsy? Diabetic? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? Uh. The man is still extremely confused. A hypoglycemic episode should be completely stopped by increasing the blood sugar levels. Steve checks again to make sure his treatment has worked. Can't be bad. The man's blood sugar levels are back to normal, but he's still dazed. Take a temperature, okay? Well, it's still not really responding, is it? No, no. I think I'm more inclined to think he's epileptic. Yeah. Epilepsy in itself does not usually lead to low blood sugar. I mean, he could be an epileptic who's also diabetic. I don't know. Uh, it's just that I, I've identified one particular problem which I can reverse and, and uh, treat. So with doing that one, he has come round, he's started to become more aware now, more awake. And as he, uh, his conscious level improves, then he'll be able to answer questions and tell us what's actually going on. The man will be taken to hospital, where doctors can investigate his medical history and control his seizures. Still to come, PC Martin Ackers makes some alarming roadside discoveries. You do not have a driving licence. So you're not going to have insurance either, are you? And paramedics in Oxford are called to a major motorbike accident. How's that pain now, Sam? Painful. Essex. Early morning in Colchester. And a major operation is underway. PC Roger Watson briefs the team. Operation New is a national... Uh, operation but we're doing a regional one today the object of the day is to actually catch some criminals and some really nasty bad people we'll go and enjoy it might sort this if you get cold once we get the old tea on and it's hot we'll give you a shout on the radio come and have a coffee all right the essex police are targeting traveling criminals as well as using number plate recognition cameras to pick up uninsured and untaxed vehicles The biker cops head out on patrol. Eager to get on the road, PC Martin Ackers. On his BMW R1200RT, Martin parks up on the side of a road to wait for an alert from the cameras and to keep a sharp eye on the traffic. And it's not long before his first hit of the day. Even with vehicles passing at 40 miles an hour, Martin spotted a car with an out-of-date tax disc. 
On this short stretch of road, he reaches 60 miles an hour to catch his quarry. He passes the car and signals for it to follow him. Before dealing with the expired tax disc, Martin will run some routine checks on the car and its driver. Thanks very much for coming in. Much appreciated. Um, is the motor vehicle your own? Uh, no, it's my friend. It's your friend's car. Have you got your licence on yourself today so I can have a look at it, please? Um, I don't have it. Do you have a driving licence? I don't have a driving licence. You do not have a driving licence? Yeah. So you're not going to have insurance either, are you? So does your friend know that you've got this car? Uh, you know, you can uh, give me permission to drive this. Even though you don't have a driving licence, you don't have insurance. Don't know, I don't have a... He doesn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Have you got any means of identification just to prove who you are, please? Right, thanks very much. I will say that you're not obliged to sign anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later wish to rely on at court. Driving without insurance carries a maximum £5,000 fine, and he could get another £1,000 fine for driving without a licence. Right, so who does the car belong to? Have you got any documentation in the car to say who it belongs to? Let in my home. Sorry? I put it in my home. All right, is there anything in the glove box to say who owns the car? I've got the paperwork in my home. So there's nothing in there at all? Yeah. All right, OK. Right, what have we got? Mercedes what? You understand how serious um, a problem it is for you to be driving this on the road with no license and no insurance, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So who does the vehicle belong to? Yeah, my friend. And his name or her name? While the pair try to find their friend's details, another officer's done some checking of her own. What you got? Um, registered to a lady, no MOT, no, no insurance, no hash DL on either name. Can you just pop the boot for us? Yeah. yeah. Whose is this? Uh, it's not like, like it's a friend. That's yours? Yeah. And the rest? That's mine. So you drive this quite a lot then, don't you? Not really, I just got... Well, not here, because I'm standing here with you. I, I mean, I like, like a few weeks ago for this one. Right, so just it's just fair to say that you drive this yep, a so couple right. of times. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah? yeah I do that. Knowing that you haven't got a licence and you haven't got insurance. Yeah. Right, okay. Right, what's going to happen to this car is I'm seizing it. Seizing it. I take it off you. Okay, I will be sending, giving you a form, and I will be sending through the post the owner a form as well. What started as a routine check on a tax disc has become something much more serious. And there's another surprise to come. OK, and that owner has 14 days to get the vehicle back. But 14 days. 14 days. But he's in China. You shouldn't be driving the car. That's how serious it is. If that person can't come to pick the vehicle up, there's a good chance it's either going to be sold on or crushed. Sure. Mm. That's serious. From today. Now. From today. Serious, isn't it? Yes. Yeah? You shouldn't be driving. You know you shouldn't be driving. And you have put the owner in that position. Yeah? God knows how much. How much is one of these worth? Over 10, 15,000, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? And there's a chance you've lost that car for that owner. Unless that owner can get over here to produce their documents. Is it, uh, how about like, the owners, why are they giving permission to a uh, no. person with valid no. driver license? No, the owner's got to come over here to a police station. Bit awkward, isn't it? I will fill out the form. I'll fully explain it to you so you understand it. That form, a carbon copy of it, I will send off to the owner and I'll have one. All right? And they all say exactly the same on it. All right? The only thing is, is obviously I have to post her copy off to her wherever the registered keeper's address is. All right? You're not going to be in this car anymore. All right, so I suggest you take your luggage, whatever it is, from there. 
You take out whatever you want from the car. I'll fill out some paperwork. Somehow the owner's got to get over here to um, produce the documents. Um, otherwise they lose their £15,000 car. Yeah, very serious for them. Uh, for both the owner and the driver. The vehicle has been seized under what is known as Section 165A of the Road Traffic Act of 1988. Have you got a particular time of your train to catch, have you? you miss it. You've missed it already, have you? Life's hard sometimes, isn't it? Sympathy, Neil. I need a signature from you, please, just to put that you understand that those two lines. OK, all I say is don't leave the country. <laughs> all right, watch out you go. That are them. Yeah. OK with everything? Yeah. Ta-da then. Yeah, no sympathy at all. Yeah, have that car from straight away. And uh, I am glad in a way that it's going to be awkward to get that car back. Possibilities, um, it's serious. It's serious for him. He's going to get a big fine for that one. Uh, if not a disqualification, certainly a large amount of points on a potential licence if he was to apply for one in, in this country. Oxford, the city of dreaming spires, home to over 150,000 people. The city and its famous university attract nearly 10 million tourists every year and are home to nearly 30,000 full-time students. A further 40,000 people commute into Oxford every day to work. The emergency medical needs of the huge population are covered by the South Central Ambulance Service and its two rapid response bikers. On duty today, Barry Pritchard. The roads of Oxford are notoriously congested. Motorbikes are the best way to guarantee getting to incidents as soon as possible. Barry's received a 999 call. A biker's down. It's a wet, windy day. Terrible conditions for bikers. But Barry makes it to the incident in just six minutes. The police are already on scene, along with one of Barry's colleagues. A motorcyclist has hit the crash barrier. His bike has rebounded, and he's gone over the top, landing on the concrete on the other side. Bikers are extremely vulnerable in a crash. They account for only 1% of road traffic, but over 20% of all deaths and serious injuries in accidents. Neck and back injuries are common. The biker, Sam, is conscious and breathing, but he's in agony. Before the team can examine him properly, Barry needs to give him something for the pain. He starts him off on gas and air, also known as laughing gas. Well, that's too bad. The idea is it makes you feel like you've had 20 pints. All right? And what will happen is you know your arm will hurt, but you don't give a toss then. All right? That's how it works. He's been given a neck brace to support the top of his spine, but the main problems appear to be along his left-hand side. The team suspect that Sam has broken his arm, but before they can examine it, they'll need to try and make the procedure as pain-free as possible. Have you forgotten what your name is yet? I'm still Sam. You're still Sam, right, OK. Keep going till you've forgotten. All right. Sam? Barry's colleague, Alan, puts a cannula in Sam's hand so they can give him morphine. Well, that tells me the amount of oxygen and gas in your blood and your pulse. Just connect on the end of your finger. I'm having so much fun. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Life on the street, this is good. Right. Yeah, we're not, not going to move your arm, we're just going to very gently cut the sleeve, all right? Yeah. yeah well, can I get the morphine before you cut the sleeve up? It's going to hurt. He's put some in already, and we'll no. put some more in a minute. It takes a few minutes to work. So what are you doing to my leg? Is something wrong with my leg? Just, you've got just, a bit of a gash. You've got a gash on your leg. You're just, just putting a bandage on it, yeah. Just okay. popping a bandage onto that for you now, Sam. All right, sir. Do you have any allergies to me? No. No. You need to get to it now, just in case, on, on the off chance that you're bleeding in there, he says. Right. What's your chest? Is that all right there? Yeah. 
Yeah. How's that pain now, Sam? Painful. Painful. More that more thing coming in. Okay. You probably still feel it, but not as intense, okay? Bad, Sam. You can take as much of this gas and air as you like, the more you take, the less it will hurt, okay? If you start getting frantic on it, don't worry about it. Where's don't that? have to cut the gloves. Sorry? I can't well, Greg. Well, Sam, we're going to be moving your arm and putting it into a splint, all right? So it might be, it might be a bit painful right. temporarily, all right? All right. This is going to be uncomfortable, all right? <laughs> Keep breath. I'm going to lie to you. All right, deep breath. Deep breath on the gas. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Deep breaths. With Sam's arm secure, the team prepare to move him to the ambulance. They're going to carry him on a scoop stretcher, which splits in half to slip under the body without it moving. Cool. Sam? Yeah? What we're going to do on three um, is roll you a little onto your left side and you feel something hard come underneath you. Okay. Have you all got a bit? We have. Yeah. Are you all ready to go on the count of three? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, we'll pull that blanket out, that might, might be breath. Getting Sam over the crash barrier is still a tricky manoeuvre for the ambulance team. And an agonising one for Sam. Without his protective clothing, Sam is feeling the effects of lying on a cold, wet road for half an hour. But shivering is also a common reaction after an accident when a surge of adrenaline is released in the body. Uh, the bike, yeah, just make sure it's off the road. It's off the road, the police. Oh. Hello, don't. Wait, no, I don't. Just take nice, deep, steady yeah. breaths, all right? It's going to sound like silly, the, the shivering and shaking is quite normal. Uh, uh, is that your arm? Uh, yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, We're just going to lift your arms slightly, Sam, so you can... Do you have to? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Is that the top uh, of your arm, Sam? The broken bit. Yeah. The bit that's okay. obviously broken. Ow, 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 ah, ah. Is that on its side, Sam? Ah, well, whoever's doing that, please stop. Okay. What we're trying to do is support your arm for the journey so it doesn't bounce around. Uh, uh, that one. No more pain. This will fit. That's quite enough pain. Yeah. So if this morphine's rubbish, I've had morphine before, and it was awesome. Is he giving you the 10 minutes? Sorry. Yeah, he's had two, yeah. two doses. I'll get it. Come here. Yeah, okay, okay. Balance, should be able to balance it in your so mouth. Keep nice deep breaths for you, Sam. Well, Sam, your blood pressure's all right, your pulse is all right. I'm sure it helps. You're talking to me. So it looks like you got away with a broken arm, doesn't it? Sam was lucky. More than 6,000 bikers are killed or seriously injured every year on Britain's roads. And Barry knows only too well how quickly a ride can turn nasty. Roundabout, wet road, bit of oil, crash barrier, recipe for disaster. Quite a powerful bike. Um, probably won't ever realise how lucky he is because um, generally you can fall over a crash barrier and kill you. They're quite sharp. He's obviously cleared it and landed on his arm. Had he landed directly on the spiky bit, it would be council milk and papers. Still to come, biker cop Martin Ackers has his hands full. You're quite clearly, not listening to this. I have you to whisk you. I'm not going to argue with you. And in Birmingham, paramedic Mark Hayes is called to a man hit by a bus. All right, all right. Okay. Birmingham, late afternoon, a 999 call's coming in. Yeah, we see, thank you, Marvel. Reports of an RTC, uh, bus versus pedestrian, just around the corner. Paramedic Mark Hayes is responding. <laughs> it's the start of rush hour. The streets are beginning to fill with commuters heading home. Mark can see the incident, and the fastest way to get to it is straight across a pedestrianised square.
there's already an ambulance on scene, as well as police officers. How are you doing? He is, he might have What's been knocked on? by a bus. The bus has carried on. Yeah. Yeah. People have just sort of hide. Yeah. Okay. Mark takes charge. Kid still chapped, don't move your head. We think possibly a bus. Anthony, open your eyes, mate. As Anthony has suffered a head injury, Mark's worried he may have also injured his neck or spine. I just cut the jacket and we're just getting him on the board and get him, get him in the war. Do you want to get everybody back? Yeah, please. All right. Okay, it's just strap on and it's. Uh... No, 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 it's all right. There is, guys, there is some suggestion you may have been hit by a bus. The guy's going to check the CCTV, but nothing's been seen. Okay. It's just a suggestion. All right, Anthony. While Mark begins to immobilise Anthony's head, police are trying to find anyone who witnessed the accident. But Anthony's head injuries have left him confused and disorientated. All right, just Anthony, relax. You've got to calm down for me. You've got to calm down for me. Anthony. We need to try to keep you as still as possible. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. yeah, we need to lie you down on this board, all right? Just bring the bed in. We'll get straight up. OK, right. You're just going to have to stand up. Okay. And we'll... okay. I said, don't lift. Don't, don't lift him. Okay. Don't, don't lift him. Okay. Right, what you're going to slip on the board, bring the bed as close in as possible. One, two, push. Try back. Try and down. Pop yourself on that bed, in the ambulance, Mark checks Anthony for signs of internal bleeding and fractures. In case he becomes compatible, do you want us to travel in the back here? Can do, because Sam can't drive. At the moment, it's, it's severe head injury. Um, He's, uh, he can very, uh, become very combative, started fighting with us. Um, that's signs of a, of a serious head injury. Um, we've already alerted the hospital. Um, ideally, it would have been nice to keep him immobilised. Uh, obviously, the risk of any sort of spinal neck or, neck or back injury is, is quite high. But obviously, as he was fighting us, would cause more harm than good to try and restrain him. Um, so. We've, we've alerted the hospital and now on route to City Hospital. Yeah, he has gone a bit quiet now. Um, we're okay. Uh, they have got anaesthetics uh, waiting, ready to obviously uh, sedate and uh, intubate. Treatment wise, there's, there's very little we can do other than try and keep him still. And uh, we'd obviously treat anything that would uh, you know, cause concern on route. Obviously, he'll end up having a um, uh, CT scan. Um, because of his agitation, um, anaesthetics would probably sedate him and ventilate him for the purpose of having a CT. A CT scan in hospital will reveal the severity of Anthony's head injury. Just try and relax for us just a couple more minutes, sweetheart. On arrival, Mark hands over to the hospital staff. Yeah. Well, on scene, we got him boarded, he tore the collar off, um, came off the board. Um, Appropriate or or no. No, okay. Anthony will be rushed straight to the trauma team. Anybody with a with a head injury um, that becomes um, agitated, combative, uh, repetitive, obviously that's that's signs of serious head injury. The risks are, you know, you've got uh, skull fractures and you've got bleeding within the brain, and all these are things that are going through your mind that could be happening. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it here. You need to be in hospital with the surgeons. In Essex, PC Martin Ackers is on patrol, on the lookout for lawbreakers. As he rides the A12, looking for people using mobile phones or speeding, he suddenly has to hit the brakes. The car in the inside lane drifted across, causing the car in front of Martin to brake suddenly. He's not going to let this one go. You drifted from your near side lane 
so that your offside wheels, your right hand wheels, were across the central white markings. You wandered over to the other side of Carrigoy, I saw all this, and he's had to anchor up. If he hadn't have done, there would have been a huge crash because you've drifted over to the wrong side of the road. There was no one in front of you at the time. Really? Yeah, because I mean, I've I'm had almost, to anchor up as I'm well. Almost, I'm almost down on petrol. I'm a, I'm a flat driver. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that should have nothing to do with the fact that you've drifted over onto the right hand side of the carriage. Some of them Very strange. I don't know why. You haven't been playing with your phone or anything no, like that no, at all? No, no, not at all. No, my you haven't been adjusting the stereo no, no, or something? Can I give you my card? I'm a plate driver. Yes, you yeah. can do that if you wish. A plate driver is someone who transports cars around the country for a living. I'm riding along following an Audi in the outside lane. Uh, the Audi's encroaching uh, on, uh, coming up behind uh, this uh, Mercedes here, which is in the near side lane. The uh, Audi's had to commit an emergency brake, and uh, as a result of, I have as well. And as I pull, come to a stop, the Audi driver um, has put his hand up to acknowledge the fact that I've pulled this gentleman over, and I've taken down the registration number of that Audi in case I need him to be one of my witnesses later. Um, let me take some more details down from yourself. But the driver isn't planning on letting this go without an argument. Do you suppose maybe you, because he was behind him, that's why he's under pressure? No, not at all. You're, you're literally behind him. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe he suddenly saw you and he's, and he's, and he's no, made it. he's great because you've moved out, which I've witnessed as well. He's insisting that Martin's made a mistake and that he's done nothing wrong. Okay. Otherwise, if you're not what, a what speed was he going? Uh, between 60 and 70 miles a Between 60 and 70 You're traveling less I mean, speed. So, so he would have had to overtake me over 70 then? No, you... No. Yeah, you just said between 50 and 70. Between so 60. he would have had to speed to overtake me. Traveling between 60 and 70. What's, what's traveling his, 70. What's the speed limit here? That's right. So, did you hear that? Between 50 and 60, that means for him to overtake me, he would have had to go over 70. He would have been breaking the law. Would yes, he would have been breaking the law. You're quite clearly not listening to what I'm I have you to wish what you say. I've said he's travelling between sir, 60... Sir, 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 to, sir, between sir, six, sir. I'm not going to argue with you. He's travelling between 60 and 70 miles now, OK? He was in the process so of there's overtaking no need you. To raise your voice at me. You're not listening to it. Oh, that chat, he would have had to go over 70 to no. take No. Yes, he would have. No. He would have. No. I've never had any problems with driving. I, I mean, I, I don't want to lose my job. I mean... I'm going to speak to my sergeant about that. Okay. Yeah. I have reported you to the careless driver because what has happened is careless. There's no doubt about it. So what I will do is, through my sergeant, I will recommend that the matter go through the driver improvement scheme. Okay, which means that the matter should not go to court. Okay, so you don't get any point for the driver. Alright, that's what I'll recommend. It's not my decision. Yeah. It's down to my sergeant as to whether that decision is, yes, it should be, before the driver calls it. So I'm getting done, ASAP, for you can see. All right? Okay, I can't be much fairer than that, but I know what I saw, and I know what I witnessed, and I know when I have to sort of slow down fairly sharp, it's because the front, the car in front of me is commencing to move. Alright, so I know what I see, and that's the reason why I'm to say that. Alright, anyway, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Sure. Nice to meet you. Okay. Just be aware of what happens in the road. Your door's not quite shut. Thank you. Alright? Thank okay, you. Then. Okay, then. What's your name, David? The driver was reported, and in keeping with Martin's suggestion, was sent on a driver improvement scheme. Still to come, paramedic Steve Harris is called to a woman collapsed in Birmingham Central Library. Your blood pressure has been very low. Birmingham, and it's another rainy afternoon in the city centre. A 999 call's coming in. We've received a call to uh, Birmingham Central Library. There's already an ambulance in attendance, uh, but they're requesting a paramedic attend. Uh, the crew on the ambulance are not paramedic trained, so they've requested a paramedic. Uh, I don't know why uh, at the moment, but we'll go along and we'll have a look. 212, Roger, received. Thank you. If the ambulance crew at the library needs Steve's help, it could mean it's a very serious case. Paramedics are trained in the use of high-tech equipment and can administer drugs, so it's possible the casualty's in real danger. <laughs> to 
Today, the weather's on Steve's side. Although it's rainy, the city centre traffic is light. It's less than a mile to the library, and Steve's on scene in two minutes. On the way, Steve's had an update. A lady's collapsed in the library and has an incredibly low blood pressure reading. So low, Steve's struggling to believe it. 50 systolic. Systolic. Oh, that's what she thinks, what he reckons. I'd like to see it. Normal blood pressure should be around 120 over 80. Okay. 5134. Okay. The ambulance crew have laid Pat on the floor with her legs raised. With such low blood pressure, this should help Pat's heart keep providing blood and oxygen to the essential organs in the chest and head. Normally he suffers from asthma. Pat and her daughter June had been looking up their family history when Pat fainted at the desk. Well, as you're lying there, how did you feel? <laughs> Better than I did half an hour ago. Tell me what happened half an hour ago. Everything was swimming around. <laughs> All right, so did you actually pass out? She did. You don't remember it, but okay. Have you been sick? Do you feel sick? No. Pat fainted before while on holiday, but her symptoms this time don't seem the same. And what's happening to you today? Has this ever happened before? In America, that was when I was dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Um, and cough, cold, flu, anything like that? So, no, I had no? a flu job a few weeks back, mm -hmm. that was it. They mentioned you'd had something to eat? I had a lunch today. Yeah, yeah. You it was, it was, and then, I'm not normally for the wine at all. We had a, mm -hmm. a rose, so. Yeah, yeah. What, one glass or one bottle? <laughs> well, it's about like a cask, I I mean, obviously people are concerned. Uh, you know, you should be concerned. But Pat isn't convinced she's sick and doesn't want to go to hospital. But this is another reason why whatever happened needs, just needs to be looked at, doesn't it? You know, your blood pressure has been very low. I mean, it's starting to climb now, OK? OK, so from when you arrived, the condition now is much improved? Much improved. You actually lay the down and put it in the top. All right. What I'd like is another BP before we start thinking of moving it. Okay. Um, well, you're going to squeeze again. Okay. If I can just... All right. Six. Ah, all right. You're improving. We'll sit you up and see how you are. You just need to tell us if you get any pain. Right. While Steve's been doing his observations, Pat's blood pressure has begun to rise. Okay. Right then, Pat. What we're going to do, we're just going to bend you in the middle, sit you up nice and slowly. One. Oh. Nice and steady. Right, just get your balance. Yes. yes. How does that feel? I'm not all right. No, yeah. yeah. Okay, bend your knees and we go one, two, three. Walk backwards. Steady. Behind you. Bottom down now. There okay. We go. And we swing your legs up and lie you back down again. We're not going to lie you flat. How do you feel now? All right. We're going to pop it down to the ambulance. We're going to do one or two more tests down there that we couldn't really do here in public. Uh, just need to expose the chest and pop some wires. And we'll have a quick look at your heart and then we'll pop it in. I do think you ought to go. I really do. I mean, if this happened to you every week, then fair enough. But... Finally was working on the computer and turned round and Mum had obviously t um, taken a turn for the worse and had a head on the table. <laughs> um, and then I had to queue up to get somebody to help us because I didn't want to push into the queue but I um, wouldn't have asked them to call the paramedics if she hadn't have uh, really deteriorated quickly. A faint, or, uh, in simplest terms, is just a lack of oxygen to the brain, usually calls through low blood pressure. So for some reason the blood pressure has dropped the, the brain hasn't got enough blood and oxygen there. The brain shuts down, puts the person onto the floor, and because the person is no longer sitting or standing up and is lying down, the blood pressure increases and that puts more oxygen to the brain, and then they wake up. In Pat's uh, case, uh, even though that had uh, occurred, her blood pressure was still very low for quite some time, and that's why the crew became concerned.
The motorbike rider in Oxford had a lucky escape from his fall with just a broken arm and badly lacerated leg. <laughs> Anthony, who was hit by a bus in Birmingham, spent five days in hospital, being treated for bleeding to his brain, but has made a good recovery and is now back home. And Pat went to hospital and after several tests was discharged. Doctors were unable to work out why she fainted. Next time on Emergency Bikers. Paramedic Steve Harris is called to an assault in Birmingham. You hurt yourself anywhere else? Yeah. They had a knife as well. And police in Wiltshire deal with a four-car pile-up. I've got a four-vehicle uh, RTC, one female's complaining of neck injury. You've got a bit of a bump to your lip there. Channel 5 unwraps Rome in a brand new documentary bringing to life the glorious and brutal times of the Colosseum gladiators. That's tomorrow night at 8. But next, your Monday night movies and first up, it's Murder at 1600.